he could even lead straight into his thing. He's like, no shit. Yep, Ty would want to do that. So we ran into Harleys and drove cross country. Keep it pretty succinct. Like, we got the bikes, rode them cross country. Cool. It's shocking to me that this is Neil's first time directing. There was a specific tone and a specific uh, approach that, that Neil and Bruce wanted to take with this. It just came down to there's nobody knows this story better than you, and then there's nobody that knows these characters better than you. Why don't you just do this? He and I actually had a conversation about it. He says, I think I'm gonna try this my, uh, myself, and I'm not sure. Neil was fantastic. The floor is yours. Okay, so remember, you've been running away from this turret mounted truck. If you come to this dead end, you're gonna look up and see a potential way out. Okay. And action. Well, check it out. I mean, his writing is honest and it's dangerous and it's natural. And I love his economy of words. He doesn't hit everything on the nose, so it leaves it open for you to interpret and bring some nuances and things like that. The entire process is collaborative, but really it's led by Neil's willingness to change and, and, and flow and decide something doesn't work and he'll fix it right there in the moment. And it is uh, something that's very foreign to, to the way that TV and film is done now, where everything has been micromanaged by the time you get it to the table read and no one wants you to change anything and everything's very precious and has been rewritten with notes from 20 people in suits and you can't do that uh, just just uh, anywhere in entertainment these days. Yeah, I just I want to make sure I I think I swung too far over to to this way and, and now it's it's a little bit of making jokes about it and I need to like, bring it back to to center. There's one scene in the game where um, we see Joel um, not as a ruthless survivor but as a father. I knew from the very beginning that he's going to lose his daughter and. Uh, I just told Neil, I was like, when that day comes for us to shoot that, I need a heads up. About a week before, he said, it's time. We're going to do that scene. I was like, okay. Because I knew that I, I was going to have to go to this place that, that you don't really want to go to as an actor. You want to find some aspect of reality that you can um, empathetically draw from, you know? Troy and I were both kind of just like walking around for a while and just kind of getting into the, to the zone. And he, and, well, my grandpa died when I was eight. He was like my dad, and so that that's always what I use to get into that that place. You know, I, I started recalling all those memories and starting pulling up all those feelings, and they're just right right underneath the surface. And when I walked back in, everyone realized that something was different. They kind of like calmed down, you know. You could feel the energy just like drop a little bit more. It was brutal. <laughs> I just I lose my shit. I mean, just completely break down. Don't do this! Don't do this! Don't do this! Please, God, no! <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> the sound stage was deathly still. It was the first take, and I felt really good about it. And it's like Neil said, "Okay, let's do it again." And so you do it again, and automatically you feel like you're manufacturing because you're trying to go back to that place, and you know you you're in that actor nightmare of you know trying to get back to that reality. And we go through it again in fifth and sixth and seventh take, and I'm just exhausted. I'm crying between takes. And I'm looking at Neil going, this is really, really hard. And um, finally, after like the eighth or ninth take, he said, all right, I think we got it. I was like, oh, thank God. And I went outside, and I was just jacked up for the rest of the day. Just, just I mean, a wreck emotionally. But we got it. Then two weeks later, he calls me. And he says, uh, so we need to reshoot a scene. I'm like, cool, what scene are we doing? And he just looks at me. I said, dude, don't do this to me. And you can either at that moment uh, throw your hands up in the air and say, fuck this and walk away. Or you can say, okay, this is an opportunity to get it more right. I'm like, okay, all right. If you don't think you got it, I'm gonna show you that you got it. We've got it in the can. And so we go through it again and it just feels fake, feels artificial. <laughs> And Neil goes, go through it again. We start doing it again. And I'm getting madder and madder with each take. And finally, about the fourth take, <laughs> Neil comes over to me, and we, I love him so much. He goes, so I'm picking up on some resistance. I was like, you're damn right you're picking up on some resistance. We've got this in the can already, and we're just wasting our time, and we're wasting all this effort and energy. And then he started talking me through the scene. And he was like, what I need you to do is I need you to, to just strip yourself of all these ideas 
and I need you to hit this beat and this beat and this beat and this beat, which just makes it sound so mechanical and it's such an emotional scene. So we start going through it and literally I am mindlessly doing these things at this point. It's okay. I know it hurts, baby. I know. So I'm gonna lift you up. I'm gonna lift you up. I'm gonna get you over here. Come on, baby. Come on, work with me, please. God, baby. Sarah. Sarah! Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. Come. And he stops. He goes, now we got it. And I realized that the reason why I wanted that first take to work was because I wanted everyone to look at me and go, wow, what an actor. And that's not what the scene needed. Those moments where you just have to sort of calm your ego down and, and just go back and do your work. That scene actually works, not because of me, but in spite of me. And that really is the marker and, and definition of working with a true, truly good director. There are many like it, but this one is yours. Why don't you have a seat? Okay. Thanks, guys. Right.